Today you're gonna to learn exactly what Midjourney version 5 can and can't do. And spoiler, it can do just about anything. AI is not only changing the design industry, but it's changing how we're gonna do business forever. And it's not happening in a few years, a few months, or even a few days. It's happening right now. So what does Midjourney's new version offer? And why does it matter? And how does it benefit you? Let's talk about it. To access Midjourney 5, there's two ways to do this. You can simply type in your prompt, and at the end of the prompt, you put dash dash B space 5, and that'll give you a version 5 of what Midjourney can offer. Or in the message bar, you can type slash settings and press enter. So that'll open up your settings, and then you can see all the different versions of Midjourney, and you can pick the one that's best for you. I have stealth mode here, and that's pretty much gonna let me actually create images that people won't see. So when you create images originally, they go into this community discord and everybody can kind of like scroll through and see what you're actually creating. So if you want that ability to have images that aren't going to be actually seen by everyone, I think it's a benefit to having the pro subscription and that'll give you the option of keeping images to yourself that you might want to use beyond Midjourney and for like client work or different things like that. Now, the main thing that I've been hearing about Midjourney 4 verse 5 is the fact that the realism is out of control. So what we're gonna do is check that out. We're gonna do some prompts and show the difference between four and five and actually see for ourselves if it actually makes a big difference with these updates. This is my first prompt and I wanted to focus on hands because hands are struggling in version four. So I wanna see if they actually were able to elevate that in version five. It gives you a realistic hand. It has mud on it. Check both of those boxes, but there are fingers missing. Some are a little too long. I think those are the parts where we start to see the struggle of the AI, but let's look at version five to see the difference. The realism is out of control. The mud is there. I think the struggles are still with some of the fingers a little bit too long and it's missing a few fingers in certain places. I'm glad this one gave me these examples because I've been getting some really good hands and this is actually faltered just a little bit to show you where we still have this gap between AI to human. My overall thoughts are is this is a great improvement on the realism and just hands in general, but it goes back to me as a sketch artist, which is what I started my career as. So if I were to sketch half of my face, I would not be able to duplicate that and flip it to the other side because it's not going to look natural. So I think that's where the AI is kind of messing up just a bit because it's trying to make things perfect. It's weird when you try to make things perfect on a human body, it actually makes us look more creepy. For prompt two, I wanted to focus on faces because faces was another thing that version four did well at, but there were certain factors to it. Let me show you. As you see in this example here, they're pretty realistic and the faces look genuine enough, I guess, but you can tell that the skin is a little bit off. There's too much texture. The eyes look a little unrealistic, but one of the biggest things is the teeth. There are way too many teeth on some of these images, and that's been some of the things that people talked about in version four that kind of made it unrealistic to use in concept art and different things like that. I know for me, if I see bro in the alleyway, I'm going the other way. He's got way too many teeth. It, it looks like friendly, but a little too friendly. So let's see what version five has done for the teeth, for the hair, for the skin and the eyes, and see if that's been elevated. And here's version five, and I mean, you could look for yourself. The skin is better, the eyes are more realistic, the hair is on point. There's a little bit of shininess to the skin, but for the most part, the teeth are there and they're all intact. It makes sense to the naked eye. This is a much improved version of faces in version five. And I think so far for the hands and the face, you could already see the difference in realism and they really focused on making things a lot more closer to reality. Okay, so you see what I'm talking about. It is on a different level. But is the brilliance of version five the reason that you don't use it? I guess it depends on who you talk to. Prompts in version four created beautiful, artistic, almost fantasy-like artwork. But in version five, realism is very close to being mastered. And that was by default. So if you want that fantasy type of vibe, you're gonna to have to ask for it in the actual prompt. That means your prompts need to be less specific, yet more detailed. Let me explain. By less specific, I'm referring to asking for ultra realistic or 8K because that's gonna be in the default settings. 
But if you want something in the style of a children's book, or if you want a cinematic scene with a Sigma lens, or even a majestic fantasy with vibrant colors in the clouds, you'll have to get specific with those actual details because that's going to help bring back some of that artisticness that was lost. Then there's the standard stuff like, do you want them to have dreads, the age? Do you want to be on the top of the Empire State Building, peering over into New York City, in the middle of a hurricane on a Miami beach? You can literally create anything, but it's important to note that you don't have to be too descriptive. And I know that gets a little confusing, but the best way to describe it as say exactly what you want and nothing more. The most fascinating part about Mid Journey's journey is that each version got much closer to reality. And now it's so close to reality that we have to ask for it to bring some more art and fantasy back into these prompts. I can go on and on about prompts and maybe I'll do a video where I just go through some prompts live and in action so you can see how the actual system works. That'd be a good video. But for time's sake, let's move on to image quality because that also has changed. We have a new default size and that is 1024 by 1024, which is literally double of what you used to get in version four. Now this is important when you're trying to export images out of mid journey and use them for different artwork and stuff like that. Upscaling is a big part of the image quality task when you're in mid journey. So let's talk a little bit more about that. And it's pretty much what it sounds like. You're upping the scale of the image, but let me show you in real time. So as you see with this prompt here I used, you get four images to work with. From here, you can upscale any image to see it as a standalone image and its default settings at 1024 by 1024. Now this is default for a one-to-one -one image, but it's said that Mid Journey now allows endless aspect ratio. So I've literally seen prompts that were 100 to one, which is wild. But in short, changing the aspect ratio is gonna change the actual resolution of the image but it's much improved from version four. To change the aspect ratio was really easy too. So all you have to do is add dash dash AR and then whatever ratio you want. I like to use 16 by nine a lot and my images come out crispy. So the aspect ratio can change, but the quality is there. The last thing to note on image quality is that upscaling has become a lot quicker too. That alone is a boost to a creator's workflow. So I know it's gonna be much appreciated. To export your image, all you're gonna do is upscale it. Then you're gonna click that image. And then in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see open in another window. Once you open that another window, all you have to do is right click and save that as a PNG. Now this is what I was talking about when it comes to upscaling, because once you send that image over into a new window and download it, that's the resolution that you're gonna have. So you can use things like Photoshop or even a site like Topaz to get a little bit more crispiness out of your image so that you can use it and transfer it to different type of art mediums. Now that you have an idea of what version five is, how is this useful and how does it benefit you? I guess the best way to explain that is to let you know how I'm using it. And I think it is a game changer when it comes to stock imagery, when it comes to product shots, when it comes to actually elevating graphics. I do a lot of graphics. I've been in this game for 13 years. And this is a mind blowing program that can really create images in a matter of seconds. But not only that, I've seen people make logos, they've done pitch decks, they use it for different type of brandings to make mockups for apps. The mind is really the only limit to what you can use Mid Journey for. So I think it's safe to say that anyone can use this to benefit them in business and entrepreneurship and everything in between. Now Mid Journey does say, as long as you're under a paid subscription, anything you create under that paid subscription is yours to use at your own discretion. This is where you kind of see what I mean with stealth mode and creating something that nobody's seen yet, even in the Discord, and then releasing it on your own time. I'm actually gonna to continue to use mid four and mid five because I think four gives you a good amount of artisticness, but that realism at five is gonna take things to another level, especially just on the simple things of stock photography and getting exactly what you need to elevate your artwork. So we understand that this AI is a must have, but will this replace us? Of course not. AI is a tool that we can use to streamline and elevate. And I think we need to take note of that. I started my career making $20 flyers for parties on campus. And those flyers actually needed to be printed. Times have changed. Tech like Canva has made it easier to make simpler designs that you don't have to pay for. You have things like Mid Journey where you can create super realistic images in a matter of seconds. Our voices can be combed with just a minute sample of our audio. It's definitely an interesting time period to be a part of, but remember, 
we're living through a time period where we're going to look back on this as old men and women and pinpoint the shift in how the world runs moving forward. Those small things like the hands and teeth not quite right, those are breadcrumbs to let us know that the human mind is going to always be needed. So I say all that to say, we have one job and one job only, and that's to continue creating.